Good morning to everybody on this gorgeous, beautiful day. We're just so delighted to have such a beautiful uh, attendance uh, on this um, historic occasion. And it is certainly my pleasure to be here at our beautiful, newest uh, Roanoke City Park here at Countryside to help celebrate the launch of Parks and Art in the Summer for 2014. This has certainly been a community program as it grew out of our arts and culture uh, plan that was uh, adopted by council in 2011. Parts and Arts is an innovative series of cultural events that takes place in our neighborhood parks. It promotes community involvement, builds cultural diversity, and allows our citizens the opportunity to enjoy art in their own home. By paying our artists and arts organizations to perform, this provides jobs and opportunities that hopefully will lead to building audiences as new individuals are exposed to the arts. And that certainly is the main premise of this program, to get all of our citizens the opportunity to enjoy the arts. We are grateful for our partners without whom Parks and Arts, it's always hard to say that, Parks and Arts <laughs> could not have taken place. The Roanoke Symphony Orchestra is a partner for a second year in a row. They use their expertise to handle all the contracting with the artists and organizations, as well as to make sure that the events run smoothly. We certainly want to thank Beth Pline, who's the uh, executive director, and David Wiley, although he is not here the artistic director. Uh, last year the program was launched with a grant from the National Endowment, Endowment of the Arts and this year a local partner has graciously stepped forward to be certain that the program continues. We are extremely grateful for the Arts at Work grant from the foundation from Roanoke Valley that ensures new parks and new neighborhoods will be served this summer. I want to thank each of you, and I certainly want to thank um, Alan Rock, and I will turn it over to him. He is the executive director of the Foundation of the Roanoke Valley. Let's give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be out. Uh, I was uh, telling Susan that uh, many years ago as a high school student, I financed my summer expenses by pulling golf balls out of one of the ponds over here uh, and uh, so it's uh, and I've kind of lost probably that many here as well but uh, this is a wonderful park and we're delighted to be here this morning uh, by way of comments last year uh, our foundation made the decision to commit three hundred thousand dollars to the arts community uh, through a special initiative uh, over and above the normal grant making that we do each year for arts and cultural organizations and this program has two parts to it. The first is called Educate, Inspire, and Create, which is intended and is already doing the work of bringing the arts back into public schools. The second piece is Arts at Work, which supports three things, the production of public art, the production of community-wide arts and cultural events and performances, and it'll also bring major arts and cultural exhibits to the Valley. When we received the proposal from the city for potential support of the Parks and Arts program, we immediately knew that we had found the perfect program for what we wanted to accomplish through our Arts at Work uh, initiative. We were certainly familiar with the Roanoke Arts Commission's Master Com uh, Arts and Cultural Plan, and our committee saw that stepping forward to underwrite Parks and Arts would help meet many of the plan's goals. It will foster collaboration among varied organizations, support the regional artist community, involve neighborhood groups, diversify the arts and cultural audiences, and provide localized programming for children. This program truly brings the performing and visual arts to where our citizens live. So the Foundation for Onick Valley as the region's community foundation was very pleased to provide $40,000 from our community catalyst fund to underwrite art, parks and arts for this year. We are further honored to have our name associated with a program that contributes significantly to making this community an even better place to live. 
So we look forward to seeing this many wonderful events that Susan and the Arts Commission and the Symphony and others make possible this summer, and we hope the community rises up and supports them in a great way. So thank you for allowing us to be part of this. I'm Amy Moorfield. I'm the chair of the Arts Commission for the City of Roanoke, and I'm delighted to be here. This is very exciting for us. I just also want to um, lend my thanks to the Foundation for Roanoke Valley and for, for Alan Ronk. Thank you. Your support truly makes this possible. Um, I also want to thank Beth Pline. Beth, thank you for second year in a row working with the commission. And I also want to thank Susan Jennings. Susan, our arts coordinator for the City of Roanoke. This, none of this would have been happening without this wonderful group effort. I also want to thank um, all of the C Roanoke City Council for their support of the programs of the Roanoke Arts Commission. In addition to coordinating parks and art, sometimes I want to call it arts and parks, <laughs> the commission oversees the implementation of both the city's arts and cultural plan and its public art plan, makes funding recommendations to the council and steps in whenever there's an arts and cultural related issue in the city. I thank you, Councilwoman Price, and to all your fellow council members, thank you so much for your support and endorsement. I also would like to recognize Roanoke Arts Commission member Rupert Cutler. Um, thank you so much. He also um, leads our Arts and um, Cultural Plan Implementation Committee as well. Thank you, sir. Um, now for the details of the Parks and Arts Program. I just want to draw your attention to these beautiful brochures. The, these should be on your refrigerator and, and in your wallet, in your car, because this is really shares with you where the activities are going to be happening this summer. Um, and again, as was mentioned earlier, we will be in five new parks. The parks were chosen based on input from the Office of Neighborhood Services and the Roanoke Neighborhood Advocates. Parks in each of the city's four sections have by, been identified for programming based on need, accessibility, and proximity to adjacent neighborhoods. And just briefly, I want to address those. Huff Lane Park, the event will be on June 7th. Preston Park on June 21st. Golden Park on Ju July 12th. Countryside Park right here on August 2nd. Mountain View Rec Center Grounds on August, August 2nd too. August 2nd. Hold on. Let me get out this handy dandy thing. We'll fix this really quick. Okay. That was a test. That was a test. That was a test. Okay, Mountain View is on August 2nd. Excuse me. Countryside Park is Saturday, July 26th. Um, these events take place between noon and 3 p.m. And the list of artistic presenters for each park is in the brochure. And I, of course, please take one. I also would like to thank any of the artists um, today that are with us. I see Catherine Devine here and others that are, are so kindly agreed to give their wonderful expertise to make these great events so exciting this summer. Thank you very much. And as a special finale, we will finish the series in Elmwood Park on Sunday, August 24th. That day's activities begin at 2 p.m., which is a change from the 10 to 3. And anyone who attends the Parks and Arts events will receive a free lawn ticket to attend the RSO Pops concert at 3 p.m. that day. Also new this year, many of the neighborhood associations are planning to have food vendors or sell refreshments. So we hope that you all come out to Parks and Arts events this summer, bring a picnic or purchase food and enjoy one of the city neighborhood's parks this summer and arts. Thank you very much.